submucosal fibroids. Submucosal fibroids are those that grow just beneath the endometrium or uterine lining. They can grow so large that they move the uterine lining out of place and can even develop a stalk. When this type of fibroid develops in this way, it's called a pedunculated submucosal fibroid. In rare cases, they can protrude into the vaginal canal. There was actually a report by the National Taiwan University Hospital of a woman with a submucosal fibroid that had inverted her uterus and blocked her bladder and colon to the extent that she needed laxatives in order to move her bowel and a catheter to remove urine from her body. Submucosal fibroids can cause a range of menstrual problems including heavy bleeding and bleeding in between periods. This is because they can increase the surface area of the uterine lining, meaning a larger area for blood to collect during the cycle. Other types of bleeding disorder associated with submucosal fibroids include large blood clots and lengthy menstruation lasting seven days or longer. Sometimes the large clots can cause pain as they move through the cervix. Since they're so close to the uterine lining, the uterus sees it as a foreign body that it needs to get rid of, so it will try to expel the fibroid by contracting. This causes severe cramps and pain, and some women have said it's as bad as labour pains. They're a common cause of infertility, as their location can interfere with successful implantation, or even cause miscarriages. A submucosal fibroid can also block a fallopian tube and prevent sperm from reaching the egg. In fact, doctors at the Wisconsin Fertility Institute found that women with submucosal fibroids had lower pregnancy rates than women with other types of fibroid. A common treatment for submucosal fibroids is a hysteroscopy in which a thin tube and camera is inserted into the uterus via the cervix. It's becoming very popular in countries in Europe, such as Italy, where doctors are actually recommending immediate surgery for small fibroids instead of waiting to see if surgery is needed. A study published by Tenon Hospital in France reported a woman who had developed a fever 18 weeks after a uterine artery embolization for a 5 cm submucosal fibroid. This woman also had pelvic pain and abnormal vaginal discharge. When they examined her, they found a fibroid comprised of dying tissue as a result of the uterine fibroid embolization. And this fibroid had developed a very heavy growth of E. coli bacteria. They concluded that uterine artery embolization was far too risky for submucosal fibroids. I also found many studies about the effectiveness of surgery on submucosal fibroids for improving the fertility. The RTI International University of South Carolina reported that when women are treated for reasons other than symptom relief, such as when pregnancy is desired, weak evidence supports treating submucous fibroids via hysteroscopy. So basically they found that even a hysteroscopy isn't going to improve your fertility if you have a submucosal fibroid. It would seem that hysteroscopy is only effective for relieving the symptoms of a submucosal fibroid. But it's a risky procedure. It can cause allergic reaction, infection, bleeding, or the perforation of organs such as the uterus, bladder, or colon. And because a hysteroscopy does not address the root cause of the fibroid, it's likely to grow back anyway. Although surgery can provide you with almost overnight results, natural remedies are significantly safer for reducing submucosal fibroids. There's no side effects, there's no organ damage, no hospital stay, no convalescence, no anaesthetic, no risks or infections. And natural remedies are suitable for women of all ages with all different types of fibroids and there's no fear of fibroids growing back. To find out more please visit www.fibroidsetc.com